Lil Wayne can go under this truck without even bending down. Kamaz that has a shower and toilet in it. You can really kill people with this car. It's better to understand which one of you snores. For $193,000 you can buy a pretty flat in Moscow or a small sleeping section of 5 square meters, but it's a special one. It will be installed on this extremely cool experimental Kamaz. We show you only the most expensive cars that you can buy in Russia, and this is Kamaz Arctica. It costs about $193,000. Why I said that it costs about 193,000. It's an experimental car and it has not been made public yet. It's unique. We'll know its real price only when it goes into mass production. Now we can say that it varies from 193,000 to 242,000. This off-roader was developed by two universities from Moscow in collaboration with Kamaz. They are Moscow Polytechnic University and Bauman Moscow State Technical University, where we are right now. There is a monument dedicated to Nikolai Bauman right behind me. He wasn't a scientist, he was a revolutionary who was just killed here and this university was named after him. So what car is this? It's an Arctic off-roader, 6x6, and there will be an 8x8 option. It consists of two parts that are fixed together by a hinge. It turns not by turning the wheels, but by moving its whole body. It's called hinge joint frame. It's made not just for fun. The car, even though it's supposed to be used in Arctic, will have to move on roads. So it has to fit in the standards of a truck. It can't be wider than 2.5 meters and higher than 4 meters to be able to drive under bridges. So when these huge wheels were installed, there was no room for steering mechanism left. We'll get in this car in the end of this episode, so stay with us and subscribe to this channel. These are Russian ties made by Nord Tech company with 710-70R38 size. Their height is about 2 meters, they are 71 centimeter wide. These are low pressure ties, constructed not to destroy the ground and to be able to continue moving even if it seems to be stuck. They have no central pumping system, but there is a special hose that you can use to pump these wheels easily. But you'll have to deflate these tires by hand. Under the cabin then there is a standard Kamaz V8 engine, diesel, 12 liters, 400 horsepower. It works with 16-speed mechanical gearbox ZF. The tank holds 700 liters of gasoline. The car has two separate 350 liters tanks on both sides. You are often dissatisfied with Russian cars that use export details. Voila! A Russian invention where almost all details are made in Russia including the new ones. For example, this balance beam that is placed between the back wheels is developed by Bauman University. It's hollow inside and thanks to its construction they managed to make the car, car narrower. Otherwise, the shocks wouldn't keep up with the weight. The front suspension is made from standard rear suspension of Kamaz 5460. Russian car for Russian conditions. The approach angle is about 27 angle degrees, clearance 76 centimeters. Lil Wayne can go under this truck without even bending down. The living section is just a frame covered with fiberglass panels that have a thermal layer inside. They say that it keeps up with minus 50-60 degrees Celsius. Three people can stay in there, but only two can live in it. There are only two beds. If you decided to go fishing with your friends, it's better to understand which one of you snores and send him to the cabin. That's the only way three people can normally live in here. This is a cabin that is located a couple meters above the ground. There is a wash basin. A stove, a microwave, a TV, air extraction system, air conditioner. That's not a WAS sauna that was built by guys from Garage 54, but it's not bad too. The heating is installed in the wardrobe to make your clothes dry and warm. If you're going outside where the temperature is about minus 60, it can be not very pleasant. 
Here is the accumulator and other electronic stuff. It has a combined toilet and shower. I saw comments about this Kamaz where people were disappointed that it has a combined bathroom where you can use the toilet and wash at the same time. I guess you all at least once in your life had experience like that, and secondly, not every flat has a bathroom like that. You just can't get to the driver's cabin from here. But there is a talking device that you can use to communicate with the driver. Let's talk about the coolest feature. You can take this module from the car and leave it wherever you like. It can be the most remote little cottage you have. And this Kamaz can move it to really distant places. To take it off you need a crane. Yes, in Arctic. But usually an expedition consists of many cars that have different equipment with them, including a crane. So if you are exploring a new territory, for example, and you need to stay there for some time, you can take this module off and stay. And the truck can move further. Speaking about the drawbacks, the generator that powers this cabin is autonomous. It seems to be a good feature. But the generator works on gasoline, and the engine of the car works on diesel, so you'll need to carry two types of fuel with you, simply because gasoline generators work better in cold environment. Maybe after testing they will rethink it, but for now it seems to be the best option. Another problem with this module is that it's separated from the driver's cabin and you have to get outside to get in. The cargo bed can hold 13 tons and the car's weight is 30 tons. A lifting apparatus is placed under the bed that can be used to pull other cars or help pushing itself if it got stuck. When something new appears, people start writing comments. Some say that a helicopter works better in Arctic. Not always, it's more expensive to buy and to maintain, and if you have to check electrical transmission lines, for example, you'll have to take off and land every 100 meters, and it can be really dangerous. Others say that DT-30 full track is already a perfect option. Not always. Chain track damage the ground and they are extremely expensive to maintain. It needs more fuel than a car with wheels. What do you think is a better car for these purposes, DT-30 or this Kamaz Arctica truck? Write in the comments below, the results will be published in a week. You need to climb the ladder to get in the driver's cabin. Some people in the comments wrote that it's the first thing that will be damaged when the car will get off the road. But this car has already been used in the wild and everything is okay. Maybe this whole construction will be changed after testing. There is a special iron stern that doesn't let this ladder get under the wheel. This cabin is standard, like in Kamaz 5350, and it has a hatch in the roof that can be used in case of emergency. This car has all possible kinds of different blocks – front axle, rear axle and trans axle. ZF Kamaz gearbox with divider like on every Kamaz, and what's interesting, they even used HPS with this steering mechanism, even though it's hinge-based. We can't really drive anywhere here, we are on the territory of Bauman's University and there are many students here, we will just kill them all. There are many of them and we really want our country to have a bright future. Let's turn the wheel. It's the first car where you need to look around before turning the wheel. You can literally kill someone. It's an unusual feeling. I turn the wheel and the whole cabin moves to the left. It can be very comfortable to use at fast food drive through. The maximum speed is 60 km per hour. According to project specification, 50 km per hour, and the maximum wheel speed is 60 km per hour too. Subscribe to our channel, there are still many interesting things to show.